Hi, good morning to all of you. Jai Hind. I welcome you to this session. This is Chandramali in front of you, and you have been watching me since some days. The largest platform where you are meeting, and every of the educator that you are seeing here is trying to give you a lot of uh, ideas to crack this examination. A very good offer has come by now. You can use my code of CMC, and you are going to get twenty percent off on any plus combo course that you take of any duration plus three months of extension. So the people out there, it's a very good offer that is running by CMC is my code. and you can see the last mile program has already uh, begun in the sense that the people who are giving interview this year they have to sit for some personality mock test and maybe some sort of training sessions the experience panel that is there in front of you an academy light subscription is about tests and 28 tests to give in 3149 56 tests to get in 4409 cmc is my code iconic subscription if you need me as your mentor this is chandramali and if you need me as your mentor you will have to give cmc code for iconic subscription and i have sort of redefined this mentorship i am doing active mentorship plus 7 days of stock taking notes giving you questions practice answer writing and everything that will be there a strategy that will be there on your google sheet a lot of things i am uh, doing here Uh, and you can have your uh, emi being made so it's not necessary that you pay everything at the outset you will have the emi being made easily Powered 500 session. This is this is my Telegram channel link. So the people out there who have still not joined them, please do so so that you can be updated about these things. Okay. So beginning this session, I like to have a very positive thing, and that goes like it's an advice, it's a suggestion that says that Turan Updhanam Kare Sadhayet. That means if you feel that some work is not going actually to be finished, it's not feasible to finish that work. It's better you don't. start working it's better that you don't start working so this is about this is about your work and this is about your advice that i wanted to give you i hope it's audible okay let's start the session let's start the session okay again power 500 i am trying to give you those topics where the questions can come or are coming can come or are coming and uh, one very important point that i felt no maybe asked in your uh, this uh, uh, exam scholarship exam that happened last sunday where we saw that adriatic sea was asked so adriatic sea may be for some point of uh, uh, point it is important in the sense that this country called as montenegro here this montenegro actually has uh, taken loan from your country china And after taking the loan, it is actually uh, now trapped under the debt trap. It's under the debt trap now. So many countries, not only Montenegro, even Sri Lanka, Montenegro, Pakistan, all under debt trap now. But the question that could be is on the Adriatic Sea. So maybe I'm not sure that we can remember everything. But what we can remember is now this Adriatic Sea is from Mediterranean Sea. When you move towards more of the east, you can go to your Adriatic Sea, and this all of its western part is touched by Italy. So this is Italy here. The, all the western part is your Italy here, and you have some countries here. You cannot remember the name, but you can remember one name that is Montenegro. Montenegro touches your touches your Adriatic Sea. It touches your Adriatic Sea. It touches your Adriatic Sea, and so does your and so does your Slovenia. So does your Slovenia, and so does your Albania. So does your Albania. So this is what you can see, and uh, uh, maybe you can try to remember here. this is also called as balkan peninsula because of the balkanization that happened here so croatia bosnia herzegovina serbia montenegro albania slovenia so they used to be at uh, just one state no uh, broken down into many the balkanization that has happened so maybe you can uh, have a feel about what it is going about and maybe a learning about the adriatic sea and some of these countries so what you have to see in this here is is montenegro touching adriatic sea or not yes it is touching Albania Sea is also touching. That is all that you have to keep in your head. That is all if they would ask you. Okay. Now I welcome you to another another sort of thing that I felt is again important. This is important because India has already signed an FTA with UAE, and now UK is in totally in line to sign this uh, FTA. And for that reason, we just have to see what this is all about. What is where? So you can just imagine. Oh, yesterday we talked about the English Channel, the Strait of Dover. So this is France here. This is France here. You have English Channel and you have Strait of Dover separating France and your uh, UK. I would say from English Channel you can go into this manner and you come to this. Maybe the Irish Sea. This is the Irish Sea. So between your Ireland and your England, you have the Irish Sea. Between your Ireland and this part of the territory, you have the Irish Sea. 
North Channel is here. North Channel is here. So North Channel is between your Scotland. It's between your Scotland and this Northern Ireland. It's between Scotland and this whole territory of Ireland. You can see between Scotland and the territory of Ireland. This is the North Channel. So do remember, North Sea is towards the east of it. North Sea is this side. So this is your France, Germany here. This is North Sea, this side. Then you have above, you have your Sweden, Finland, etc, etc. This is North Sea here. But North Channel is Scotland and between your Ireland. Between your Scotland and Ireland, you have the North Channel. And if you see this whole uh, sort of territory is there. And uh, I just wanted you to see, uh, have this feeling because if they ask you, uh, State of Dover became easy now, English Channel became easy. But North Sea is confusing with North Channel. So North Channel is something that is between Scotland and your Ireland, while English Channel is between your England and France. So a very valid question that could come here. Very valid question that could come here. Fine. Okay. Now if I ask you, if I ask you, uh, maybe uh, a very important piece of information that you must have with you, and that is your India is the second largest investor in the UK. Okay. And immersed as the so we are the largest international job creator there, but we are the second largest investor there. Also. UK is the fourth largest investor in India. So after Mauritius is at number one, then we have Singapore and then we have Japan. After this comes your UK, after this comes your UK. So UK is your or United Kingdom is your fourth largest investor, fourth largest investor. Now a question to you that you have to answer and let me know why in the comment section down. On which river do we have Glasgow? On which river do we have Glasgow and that river falls where? This is what you have to answer to me. Where is Glasgow? On which river it is? And that river falls where? Where does that river fall? You have to answer me. Let's see. In the comment section, you will have to answer me Glasgow. Okay. And do also see where Thames is falling. Where Thames is falling. So you can imagine no, Thames is going like this and London is on it. And it is falling in the North Sea. Nearby your state of Dover, it is your North Sea part. This is whole your North Sea part. State of Dover is between your France and UK, France and London, France and UK. And this you can see State of Dover. This is Thames going like this and falling to North Sea. But I want to let uh, you, I want to ask you that where would be Glasgow and on which river it is, where that river is falling. If you can give me this answer, excellent. Let's come to the third item that I wanted to discuss about in IR and that is about Iran and the Farzad B. Now, Totally, I don't expect something uh, of this sort, but if they try to give you what they do is they would say that Farzad B was so much in news what it is all about. So Farzad B is a, a gas reserve uh, sort of center here and this is actually having this is an actually having uh, in this Persian Gulf if you see the midpoint of it is Farzad B. So a lot of gas fields are there. So this is one of the gas fields and uh, it was in news because India has now been not given this Farzad B. There are many reasons for it. One reason that we felt was that on the price uh, sort of issue we had, the Farzad B, we said that the Farzad B reserve, it consists primarily of lower quality of natural gas, but Iran was hell bound on making the price at par with the good quality. We said that you don't have good quality natural gas here. Why? Because it had, so if it is not good quality, it means what? not a good quality of natural gas that means what it had high it had high methane concentration it had high methane concentration that that means it was a sour grade it was a sour grade it was having high methane concentration so any such gas which has high methane concentration is exactly not a good quality natural gas so do remember this this can be used for the fertilizers the stock but cannot be used for your natural gas generation. So this is something that you have to keep in your mind. If it is having more of methane concentration, not a good gas. And this is your Farzad B over here. This is your Farzad B. Persian Gulf and this is your Farzad B. Fine. Now, if you are seeing this Persian Gulf, I think we should again go and see some of these areas. So this is your Iran making the whole of your border with this. Whole Iran making the border. Iraq also touches it. Iraq also touches it. So the question can be Persian Gulf and which all countries touches it. So Iran touches it. Iraq touches it. Not a problem. Kuwait has to touch it. Saudi Arabia has to touch a great deal of it. Then you have your Qatar coming here. Bahrain is in between only. So Bahrain will be touching. 
Qatar is touching, UAE is touching and even Oman since this territory is Oman over here also, Oman is also touching. So Persian Gulf just have a look, Iran, Iraq is there, Kuwait is there, IIK is there and then you have Saudi Arabia, you have Bahrain, you have Qatar and then you have UAE plus Oman. So this is your uh, idea maybe if they ask you about this, which all countries touches Persian Gulf because why I feel this is important, you know, Farzad B, Farzad B is almost in between this. So Farzad B is almost here, Farzad B and this has now been taken away. Uh, we have said that your natural gas is not good because concentration of methane is so high, hence we are not taking it. But you have to just see here that maybe they could ask you about the Persian Gulf. They could ask you about the Persian Gulf. And I totally told you about this that your Tropic of Cancer does not pass through your Tropic of Cancer does not pass through your Persian Gulf. The Tropic of Cancer does not pass through your Persian Gulf. It is above your Tropic of Cancer while Red Sea, this Tropic of Cancer was cutting the Red Sea. Now since we have to see this the map things easily, no? Uh, just keep in your mind this is your Farzad B here. Just see that Iran also is a very important country that makes some of the borders. It makes Afghanistan and Pakistan becomes very easy for us. Afghanistan and Pakistan are covering this whole eastern end. If I see the northern end, you have Turkmenistan here and then you start your Caspian Sea. So Iran, if you see, has at the both north and the south, it has connectivity with the water. Caspian Sea is here and you have Persian Gulf and your Gulf of Oman here. Caspian Sea is here and you have your Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman here. So it's a very strategically located country and it has such, a, a, such an accessibility that it can go even to your Europe also and to your Asia also. So you have to see Afghanistan and Pakistan touches this end. You have Turkmenistan here, Turkmenistan here. You move ahead, you have the Caspian Sea making the border. And then you enter Azerbaijan, then you enter Azerbaijan and then you have Armenia. You have Azerbaijan and then you enter Armenia, Azerbaijan and Armenia and then you see the Turkey making a border, Turkey making a border. Do remember the negative list now is Syria does not make border. Syria does not make border. Do remember this, this all part is for Iraq now. This all part is for Iraq. So Turkey and Iraq are making the border here. Turkey and Iraq are making the border here. Then it opens up into the Persian Gulf. Then it opens up into the Persian Gulf. So if you see the southern part of it, no country is making the border with it. It's Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman. But in the west, you have Iraq and Turkey. Iraq and Turkey. Syria does not touch it. So my question, a uh, hint, hint to you is, they could ask you about Syria. That would look like that. Yes, it might be touching. Syria does not touch. Israel, Jordan are very far away. They are not going to touch. Syria wanted to come, but it is actually stopped here itself. Turkey makes it, Iraq makes it, Armenia makes it, Azerbaijan makes it, Azerbaijan makes it. So this is something that you can keep in your head that Syria does not make it. Okay. Second is Georgia. Georgia touches the Black Sea, also does not touch Iran. Georgia touches Black Sea but does not touch your Iran. Georgia touches Black Sea does not touch your Iran. So do remember this of the Central Asian countries, Turkmenistan touches your Iran. Afghanistan and Pakistan is already touching. You have Azerbaijan and Armenia. You have Turkey and Iraq here and the whole Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman here. Okay. If this is fine with you, let's see some other things also. Iran is again very much into the news. So I told you yesterday, know that if you make a line like this, you will reach like this. So please understand if I am coming from maybe your Astana, so I can drop a line like this and I reach somewhere to Tashkent. Then I can even reach to Dushanbe, I can even reach to Kabul. So this is the manner in which I am coming. Also this I can reach from Tashkent to Azgabad to Tehran. I can reach like this also. But I just wanted to show you something. A very important international corridor is being considered now. That important is your, we have a route from India to Russia and Europe via this Red Sea. We have a route, existing route, if you want to go to St. Petersburg or Moscow, we have to take this route for the time being, that is your Aden, then we go to Red Sea, then we come to your Mediterranean Sea, then we cross it all, then we take a turn here, we come to Bay of Biscay, then we travel to the this uh, Dover, the Strait of Dover, then the North Sea, then we come here, the Gulf of Finland, etc, etc, and then we all go to Gulf of Finland and go like this. So this is a great route that has that is there, but we are making 
or it's already there it's already started instc that is international north south transport corridor so that india can be easily accessing russia and india can be easily reaching to europe and this is very important in the sense that from mumbai we are starting and we are coming to this port location so we are trying to make a port location here also that is chabahar port in iran the chabahar port in iran plus we can also use the bandar pass the bandar pass port and we go to tehran we go to tehran and directly from there we can go to caspian sea then we can have a halt at baku that is azerbaijan then we directly from here we can reach to astrakhan because this is all russia here see this is all russia here so russia is already present here we can directly reach to russia via this route we can directly hi hi everyone so we can directly reach russia from this point so this is a very important thing that you can see russia so much in news so not other things are going to come but this can come if you have to reach russia how you can take one route i have already given you chennai to vladivostok i have already given you chennai to vladivostok do see that the second route to moscow is your india then you come to iran that is bandar e abbas then you come to your tehran here then you come to your caspian sea and then you have azerbaijan baku directly you can reach to russia here so not much of a stop it can be your multi modal it can be your multi modal transportation thing that is happening because you will be reach, uh, using your vessels also ocean also you will be using your roads also railways also so a good thing that is coming by is instc instc if you see from mumbai we can reach to bandar e passport or the chahabar port that we have made and from here we can go to tehran from here also we can go to tehran and then from tehran we can go to baku from baku we can go to astrakhan from astrakhan we can go to moscow and from moscow maybe if i show you this map now please see from moscow maybe we have inlets to all other places or we can go to other uh, european countries also so this is a very important thing that is coming by but do remember this route will have azerbaijan also will have your uh, this russia then comes your this whole part that can can be there or europe can be easily accessible so from iran now see how many countries are we crossing we are directly coming from india to iran then we are directly coming to azerbaijan and then russia so directly from caspian sea we can reach to russia so these only are the countries that would be involved so iran azerbaijan may be here then russia iran azerbaijan and russia that is all that you have to remember from here we can reach out to any such european country then so a very good thing that is coming by now again one thing more that you have to keep in your mind is no afghanistan as we have discussed yesterday also is a very important country in the sense for examination we were actually talking about a garland highway there or a garland road there this garland roadway would have its connectivity with the chabahar port at iran now chabahar port also in dilemma that what is happening but from chabahar port to actually we were trying to make a track here so we were trying to make a track here if you could see from chabahar port to zahedan from chabahar port to zahedan we would reach from zahedan then we will come to zaranj from zahedan we will come to zaranj and from zaranj will have a delaram highway so from chabahar will come to zahedan zahedan from there will come to zaranj and zaranj and delaram would be an highway connecting your garland road garland road so if they ask you what is about this garland road it's about afghanistan's coverage and the connectivity there from this chabahar port to zahedan to zaranj and from zaranj to delaram from there we can have herat delaram kandahar kabul mazar e sharif all connected and all it is concerned so looks like a garland that has come up herat delaram kandahar kabul and mazar e sharif this looks like an all a garland thing has come up but it's all connectivity that is starting from iran so iran has really become a very important strategic uh, country for us and not only in the sense of energy but also in the sense of connectivity with russia and europe so the paradigms are changing earlier we used to only think about energy but now we are thinking about the reachability or accessibility to other countries russia europe every country could be accessible if we are having this chabahar developed well from there we can directly go to tehran also and from tehran we can go to caspian sea from caspian sea we can come to russia from russia we can go to europe and russia we can spread all i hope this you can understand from tehran you can come to baku from baku you can go to astrakhan and you can reach anywhere so a very good road that has come by a very good route that has come by fine with you fine with you i hope it's fine with you so if they ask you now if they ask you now uh, where is this chabahar port in which uh, 
which you will say is it gulf of oman is it gulf of oman you could go and get confused here is it gulf of oman or something else where do you think is your chabahar port gulf of oman or somewhere else what do you feel yes it has to be gulf of oman only please understand this is already gulf of oman you know this is persian gulf at the helm of the persian gulf near by your uh, hormuz strait you have bandar abbas port this is chabahar port here chabahar port has been strategically decided in order to counter your gwadar port the gwadar port so this is your gulf of oman this is your gulf of oman so take this very uh, maybe uh, maybe logically that this is your gulf of oman here you have the red sea here below here you have the gulf of aden this is gulf of oman fine is everyone okay now let's come to this sasek so uh, i feel that uh, they did not ask you in 2021 but i was expecting a question on this they could ask you on sasek sasek is your south asia sub regional economic cooperation so what happened is you no know, Uh, as we were seeing that this is not going to be successful with sark countries to in order to have some economic integration so in order to have a great cross border connectivity or maybe to have regional economic boom coming up we started with sasek sasek is your 2001 that was formed in 2001 it comprises of seven countries namely india bangladesh bhutan maldives nepal sri lanka and myanmar so one thing is for sure india is there and if you just see that we have just removed pakistan pakistan is not there so if you see india bangladesh bhutan it's all are there all are there but it's not what is not there is your pakistan and we have included myanmar we have included myanmar in this so myanmar has come in pakistan has gone out so this is what you can keep in your mind sasek in 2001 which is about what it is about your boosting your economic integration cross border connectivity for maybe your booming of the trade etc so they have a common vision of boosting intra regional trade and cooperation in south asia while also developing connectivity and trade with south east asia through myanmar so myanmar is a key to your sarsek because it is only key that will have your access towards your south east asia so the south asia connecting the south east asia via myanmar is one of your dream of sarsek fine fine now ADB that is your Asian Development Bank serves as a secretariat to the Sasek program. So Sasek is talking like a cooperation which is secretariat having its headquarter at your Asian Development Bank. And for Asian Development Bank, you all must be knowing where it is. Please let me know where is this your Asian Development Bank headquartered? Where is it headquartered? Manila, yes. So Manila, that is your Philippines. So you have Manila, the Philippines. Uh, you have your ADB serving there, and it's a headquarter there. The same goes with the Sasek program now, the Sasek thing. Now, do understand one thing: you have to keep in mind what all countries. So B B I N is there. See B B I N is there. That is your Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal. It is already there. You have Sri Lanka and Myanmar. S M M. Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Maldives that are there. Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Maldives that are there. so these are the seven countries that you can see in the sasek s a s e c s for your seven s for your seven here afghanistan is not there please see carefully afghanistan is also not there so we have just omitted our western say, uh, maybe uh, borders there afghanistan is not there we are not having pakistan we are having only the eastern part if you see and some what the southern part so you have eastern part because you need connectivity with your southeast asian countries and you have the southern part because they are at the helm of your trading things sasek has come in that fashion now i also wanted to talk about a one very important corridor that is existing that is actually being planned or it's already started what is happening is you no know, since we are not at all interested in your uh, in this china's uh, bri or the belt and the road initiative what we have given to them is let's have some connectivity myanmar for us is a very very important is very important in the sense that it is an opening towards china it's an opening towards the southeast asian countries so myanmar has to be there and hence we talk about the bcim that is your bangladesh india bangladesh india and then you have your this uh, china and myanmar so bangladesh india china and myanmar they are having a bcim economic corridor for this integration part for this integration part what you have to keep into consideration is no it starts from kolkata and it is actually to kunming so it is also called as k2 k2 economic corridor kolkata kunming 
कोलकाता कुनमिंग कोलकाता कुनमिंग कनेक्टिविटी और इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर इफ यू सी फ्रॉम कोलकाता वन गोस टू जेसोर देन ढाका देन स्टिलचर देन तामाबाली इम्फाल काले मैंडले रूली तेनचोंग डली एंड कुनमिंग तो ऑलमोस्ट इफ यू सी 2800 किलोमीटर ऑफ द सिल्क रूट इज एग्जिस्टिंग और इज कमिंग अप एंड ओनली इंटीग्रेशन और ओनली थिंग इज नो कुनमिंग टू कोलकाता कुनमिंग टू कोलकाता सो दैट वी कैन हैव द कनेक्टिविटी विद चाइना इन दिस फैशन द ट्रेड Uh, and we are actually needing this because north east needs a great connectivity towards the south east asian countries so that it can also have this good trade coming up for that reason we have the kolkata kunming initiative that is the bcim economic corridor bcim economic corridor okay now if you have seen bcim you must also know about the bbin bbin is bangladesh bhutan india and nepal so bbin we have signed a motor vehicle agreement motor vehicle agreement so what was happening is so since the trade was happening so from one uh, thing that one country wanted to pass to other country you need all the licenses all the transits so it was a very uh, hassle process it was a process which would require a lot of uh, ideas of how to go about the things the routes are already so uh, uh, congested so we wanted to have an agreement which make this hassle free we can have a common sort of agreement or a common license so someone moving from bhutan to bangladesh is not stopped at india in that sense if someone has to move from bangladesh to maybe north east it's not stopped from north east to bhutan no one should stop there from nepal if it is coming to anywhere uh, it should not be stopped so this is something that we are looking towards to so bbin uh, actually was a very good idea mooted but uh, in 2015 or 16 bhutan said that uh, we are not so comfortable with it because we feel that it will not be given and uh, uh, it will be actually threatening our environment so we uh, did not uh, push it but other countries were all looking for it and finally i think we are succumbing or uh, bhutan is coming to it and it is trying to start this so bbin if the question is asked is about the connectivity program the regional connectivity and also this connectivity will boost a lot of trade opportunities it is going to boost a lot of trade opportunities there so bbin is your bangladesh bhutan india and nepal you can see that how your kolkata and it is connected with your agartala also it is going to have your connectivity with your uh, maybe if we go to south east also we can have a connectivity now coming up and we have this in nepal we have some station in this bhutan and a very good so we have this benapol petropol uh, no here from west bengal if you are coming to this bangladesh you have petropol here you have benapol here so it's a one of the trading post that is there and this trading post is actually uh, very congested so we are asking for that if someone has to go from kolkata maybe to here this part in guwahati it should be allowed freely now because we have signed this bbin motor vehicle agreement that they do not are they are not harassed they are not checked every now and then and it's all a smooth route that is coming up so if they are asking you bbin or bcim somewhat integration that we are looking forward to and this tazek that is south asia sub regional economic cooperation which started in 2001 i am expecting a question here do remember neither afghanistan is there nor pakistan is there it has myanmar but it has myanmar but fine so that would be all for today let's meet tomorrow and uh, we are still finishing a lot of things so i r i almost feel that one or two sessions would be more than enough to finish it off Okay, so for plus you can have four three 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 per month if you apply the code of CMC. You get in three eight nine nine and iconic six two zero eight per month if you apply the code of CMC. You have five five eight seven per month. Anyone with geography option do contact me two two nine two per month if you apply the code of CMC. You have two zero six three per month and the batches are only starting from today. You can look for it and uh, best in class educators are already here. You have a good test series running by Jai Hind Jai Hind everyone. Thank you so much. And an academy store has already opened up in Delhi, so do visit that. Score booster test series is running by 15 question, 15 minutes you can see, and you can have a lot of comprehensive coverage of the course, a revision that you can have, and a free mega test series that is running by the Hindu is on Wednesday, Sister is on Saturday. You can sit for it. That would be all from my side. Thank you so much. Take care, Jai Hind, and we are coming with more topics. Thank you so much.